Okay, so here we are in ZBrush Core 2021, and we're continuing with the Dumbo Octopus Ring project. So in the previous video, we learned how to create a Z-Sphere armature and convert it into a mesh. So you can see in this file, I have two objects. I have my Z-Sphere object or my Z-Sphere tool, and I have my geometry ready to sculpt. So before we go any further, let's get some ring geometry that we can work with so that we can scale and position it this correctly. I'm going to go into Lightbox, and under Projects, I'm going to go into the Jewelry folder, and I want to load this Jewelry PlaneBand.ZPR object. Now the problem is, is if I load this, then my octopus is going to go away. I already saved this to my disk, so I'm not going to lose anything that I did, but I need to find a way so that I can have both this ring geometry and the octopus in the same file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this uh, jewelry plain band .zpr project by double clicking on it. Don't need to save any changes. Here's my model It's a mesh. As you can see, polygon mesh. So what I'm going to do is just export this as an OBJ. So I'll go into Z plugins. I want to go to 3D print hub. That's this plugin right here. And let's just export as an OBJ. So I'll save this and we'll just call it ringband.obj. Now let's go into Lightbox. I'll go into Recent for Recent Files. Find my Dumbo Octopus 02.zpr project. Double click on it to load it. Don't need to save changes here. And I'm going to go to the Z Sphere tool right here. And let's append to that ring. So, well, let's import it and then add it. So I'm going to go down here and choose Append and add my Polymesh 3D star here. Let's turn on transparency so you can see what's going on. With this selected, I'm going to choose Import and select that ring band. And there we go. Here's our ring band. Now we can see that the octopus and the ring band are totally different scale from each other. So let's scale up our ring to something that's kind of close to real world units here. I'm going to go into the Subtool palette, Hide the Z-Sphere Octopus, make sure that ring band is selected. And I'll just rotate, I'm gonna to rotate to a front view by dragging in our little friend up here and zoom in a little bit. Okay, so how do we scale objects in ZBrush based on real world units? There's a few ways to do it. I'm gonna use the transpose tool because it's a nice visual way to measure things in ZBrush. So to do this, I'm gonna press the move button or you could press the W hotkey either way. So now we have our familiar move gizmo. I'm going to go up here and click on this button, which instead of having the gizmo, now we have our transpose tool. It's just another way to manipulate objects in ZBrush, but the cool thing about the transpose tool is it can be used as a digital caliper. So if I click right here and start dragging out, you can see it's got little tick marks on it, and we can set this to as a way to measure objects within ZBrush. So I'll drag this out here. I'm going to go into the Preferences menu and expand transpose units and let's first let's click on set units and set the units to millimeters just type in mm for millimeters hit enter and then i'm going to set the major ticks per unit to one so that we each tick is one millimeter and minor ticks let's set this to two so you can see the minor ticks are now splitting those millimeters in half so we get a, a rough idea of what a half a millimeter looks like so next i'm going to Hover over here so you see this dot is red. This is one of the vertices of our ring band. So I'm going to click on this and drag out. And while I'm dragging out, I'll hold the shift key so it's a straight line. And let's drag out a certain distance. Let's go about nine and a half millimeters. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's zoom in here so it's easier to count. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine and a half. So I'm just going to hold the shift key and drag this to about there. And then what I'm going to do, zoom out a little bit. I'm going to select this circle right here, hold the shift key and drag it down so that it's going straight up and down. So now I know the distance from the center to this is about nine and a half millimeters. So with my ring band selected, uh, I don't want to move the transpose. I'm going to go down here to deformation and take my size slider here and just drag it until the edge of the ring, the outside of the ring is even with the line here, the transpose. 
I can go into Z plugin, expand 3D print hub and choose update size ratios. So we got about 19.3 millimeters is our size. So I'll click on this. So that's, you know, roughly a little bit more than a size 10. So we could scale this down just a little bit more. Do Z plugin update size ratios. So that's 18.8. .8. So that's almost a size nine, just a little bit below. Let's call that good enough for jazz. And I'll click on this and let's save this. So I'm going to save this as Dumbo Octopus 03.zpr. All right, so now we have our ring band sized. Let's turn on the Octopus Z sphere. So this is looking a bit big. Uh, the problem is if I select the Z sphere, I can't just scale it. If I try and scale it, it's going to scale the individual Z spheres. I want to scale the whole thing. So to do this, I can go down to the deformation palette again and use the size slider to kind of shrink this down. And also, well, we have a choice. If we want to have the octopus facing front, what we're calling front obviously is relative, we can go here to rotate. I'm going to turn off this little Z button right here and turn on this little Y button. Yes, the buttons are really, really small. Now I can rotate the octopus along the Y axis. So I'm going to undo that. We can type in, oops, undo it, select rotate, type in 90 if we want to have the, it facing that way, or if we want to have this facing the front, type in 90 again. So every time I change the slider, it's based on the current position. So if I typed in 90, it would rotate again, and then we'd be facing this direction. And then let's uh, move this up so it's a little bit closer to the top of the ring. So I'm going to click on this little X button to turn it off, click on this Y button to turn it on, and use offset to bring our little octopus friend right here. And it still seems a bit big, so let's scale it down. That'll work for now, we can make it larger. All right, I'm being indecisive. Let's do something like this. We'll start with that. So at this point, I want to start posing my octopus on the ring. And I have two different ways I could go about this. I could select my Z-sphere and start posing the Z-sphere. This has the advantage of being very easy to do since that's what Z-spheres are great at. So for example, I'm going to press Q to switch to draw mode. Let's lower the draw size. And I could just click here on these connecting Z spheres to convert them into posable Z spheres, right? So I could just make a bunch of Z spheres here, switch over to rotate, and then start rotating the tentacles. And it's very easy to do once you get the hang of it. It's much easier than moving geometry around, especially if you kind of stick to rotating as opposed to move. So if I press W to switch to move, I can also position the tentacles this way. It's just I run the risk of changing the proportions of the tentacles because I can move them as far as I want. So that's just a personal preference. If you use rotate instead of move, then you know the tentacles will always be the same length because you're just rotating their parent and you're not worrying about you don't run the risk of accidentally moving them. But of course I switch between the two, so I'll press W for move, and then squish this out of the way, or move this on top or whatever, you get the idea. So I can continue posing all the tentacles of my uh, octopus, however I want to have them on the ring. And then once I have my posed version, I can convert that into geometry and append it as a subtool and then sculpt that posed version, right? So to do that, I press A for geometry preview mode. And then I can click on make polymesh 3D or you can go down to adaptive skin, click on make adaptive skin. They both do the same thing. So I'm just gonna click on make polymesh 3D. So here's the polymesh version of the posed octopus. Go back to this version, you can press A so you can see that's the Z sphere version. And then I'm gonna choose uh, append and find my posed version. So here's my posed version. 
right? So we can hide the Z-sphere version, subdivide this, and then start sculpting away. The advantage of this, like I said, Z-sphere is easy to pose. The disadvantage is I, since I'm breaking symmetry with the tentacles, I can't really take advantage of radial symmetry to sort of, you know, reduce the amount of time spent sculpting the tentacles because I have to sculpt each tentacle individually. Another way of going about this is if I go back to my Z-sphere version here, I'm going to hide the posed version here, press Control z a few times to get back to my original version. Right? So what I could do here is I could convert this into geometry. So press A for the geometry preview, choose Make Polymesh 3D, go back to this version that has my subtools, append that unposed version right here, and hide the other ones, subdivide, and then I can turn on symmetry. I press X to activate symmetry. If I have symmetry, radial symmetry on the Y axis set to eight, then what I can do is I can go in here and just worry about one tentacle and symmetry will take care of the other ones. So if I wanted to add particular detail or suction cups or whatever, that could be a huge time saver. If I want to sculpt on the head, I'll just go in here, transform, turn off radial symmetry. And let's see, I think it's on the Z axis now. Nope, I'm still on the X axis. So then I can go in here and start sculpting the head also with symmetry. As a huge time saver. The downside of this, of course, is that I have to go in afterwards, after I've sculpted everything and made all my details, then I have to go in here and start posing this, the legs. And the geometry is gonna be a little bit harder to pose than the Z-spheres. You also run the risk of stretching the polygons, which will distort any details that you've created. But I could go in here and then, you know, press W for the gizmo, Click on this to go to the center of the unmasked portion. Hold the Alt key, move this over here to change the pivot, and then start, you know, rotating and so on. Or I could use, you know, the move brush or move topological is even better. Move topological, that means that it'll just move the points that are connected to each other, so you have less of a risk of moving another tentacle by mistake. But you get the idea, I can go in here and start to pose it that way. Now, of course, in the process of posing, you can see I'm doing a lot of inflation and smoothing and cleanup. So any details like suction cups or other stuff that I've sculpted on here, I'm gonna have to go back and fix anyways. So that may not be a, a decent enough time saver to justify this approach. It might be easier to use the Z-sphere, pose the Z-sphere, convert that into geometry, and then sculpt on that. So I think that's the approach that I'm gonna use. The other thing you could do is you could pose your Z-sphere version and then append your unposed version and use the Z-sphere version just as a visual guide to how you want to pose the tentacles. Okay, so I'm going to turn on radial symmetry and scale down the tips of the tentacles and scale up the roots. So sped up the video a little bit because a lot of what I'm doing here you know, I'm going to insert some Z-spheres, switch to rotate, and start posing these things. But a lot of what I'm doing is, is just trying to figure out what the pose is going to be. So that's the nice thing about Z-spheres is you can really just noodle around all day long and try and figure out what the pose is without having to re-sculpt a whole bunch of stuff after you pose it. And uh, I'm switching between rotate and move. If you use move and drag on the connecting Z-spheres, it's another way to pose the tentacle without necessarily stretching it. You can also hold the alt key while you're moving the connecting z-spheres around and you get sort of kind of like an inverse kinematic kind of feel, meaning that if you tug on the end it moves the parent z-sphere as well as the child. So uh, just something to play with. If it doesn't make any sense to you, don't worry about it. It's just another way to move these things around. So definitely want some spiraling overlapping tentacles here but I also want to be conscious of how they're going to feel, or how the ring's going to feel, you know, sandwiched between fingers. Uh, so I don't want tentacles poking into neighboring fingerings, fingers either. But at this point, it's mostly, you know, working out the personality of the pose. This is not going to be a mean octopus. This is going to be a happy octopus. So look at octopus rings. I see a lot of angry octopuses out there. I don't know what's got them so upset. 
Uh, but this guy is going to be a happy ang- happy octopus. And um, the other thing about Dumbo octopuses, which I will deal with after I've posed it, is they have these, the reason they're called Dumbo octopuses, is they have these little flaps, little fin-like things that come out of their head. So I'm going to add that after I've got the rest of the uh, octopus worked out. They look like Dumbo elephant ears, so hence Dumbo octopus. So one of the advantages that the full version of ZBrush has over ZBrush Core is that you can actually use Z-spheres to pose geometry. So you can use them like a skeleton and bind the geometry to the Z-spheres, and that adds a lot more flexibility because if a client needs you to change, uh, say, a tentacle position or some other detail, you can always go back and use the Z-spheres to pose the original mesh without having to re-sculpt a whole lot of stuff. So it does save a lot of trouble. But that's not available in ZBrush Core, so we have to kind of go with more of a traditional approach. Um, and basically pose this, convert it into geometry. We'll always have the original posed Z-sphere version around, so we can always make changes to that, but of course it means we might have to do a little bit of re-sculpting if we have to make a major change down the road. Um, so you can see I'm starting to add more Z-spheres to add a bit more of a curve to the tentacles and just moving them around and trying to sort of balance out the composition. I think it's a little lopsided on one side at this point. So as I'm moving the tentacles, I'm starting to stretch them a little bit. I mean, I don't really think that anybody's going to come in and measure each tentacle. Although the Dumbo octopuses den do tend to have more stubby tentacles. It really depends. I've looked at a lot of pictures of them. And like all octopuses, they can change their bodies pretty dramatically. So it's hard to get a read on exactly how long these things are. Um, there's also a certain amount of webbing between the tentacles for some of the Dumbo octopuses. So I, I know how I'm going to deal with that technically, but artistically, I don't know exactly how much of it I'm going to add to this. So if it doesn't work out, we'll just call it a regular octopus. Um, but I think I can figure that part out pretty easily. And after we convert it into geometry, there's still ways to go about, you know, changing the length of these tentacles. There's lots of different tricks you can use. Whenever you're working in ZBrush Core, you know, there's there's always a way to go back and change things. You're never really kind of trapped by the things you create because there's plenty of workarounds uh, that allow maximum flexibility. That's why it's such a wonderful tool and why it's so popular among digital artists. So I think I'm pretty much done with the Z-sphere posing here. I'm just kind of noodling here, and I think that looks a little bit better. So that's what it looks like when it's going to be geometry. I'm kind of playing with the subdivision preview there. Okay, so I think I'm happy with the pose. I'm going to set density down to 1, so that's the lowest subdivision level. This is about 2,000 points or so. So let's press Make Adaptive Skin. It's going to make a copy of it and put it in the toolbox up here. The toolbox kind of gets filled with all these versions. That gets a little bit frustrating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to append the latest version as a subtool, so I don't have to constantly hunt for it up here. Um, figure out which one is the right one. You can see that little number two next to one of them. That indicates that's the number of subtools. So I know that's my main tool. So that's this one down here. It says two subtools. What I'm going to do is go down here and find the append button. Press append find the posed skin version that's this one i'll append to that so now i have it as a subtool so I'll go back to my original one press a to switch back to z spheres select the mesh so i have them both in the same tool or 3d object here along with the ring so let's save this as uh dumbo octopus 04.zpr and in the next chapter we're going to actually do some sculpting